So you're going to go ahead and connect the USB cable to the DAC and then go ahead and connect it to the computer. And you'll notice that it'll tell you, oh, we've detected the USB. If not, it will uh, install a driver. So then go ahead and open LabVIEW. Now keep in mind that when you're using these DACs, if you have an old VI you made and you're getting an error from the DAC Assistant, it's most likely because you need to delete that DAC Assistant and reinsert it for that specific DAC. So when you use the DAC in LabVIEW, it memorizes which specific DAC you're using on what specific port on the specific computer you're using. So we're going to go ahead and use the control and uh, shortcut to open a new VI or you can click blank VI and then you have your front panel and block diagram. I'm going to go ahead and go to the block diagram. Now you're going to use the same DAC assistant block as you did in measurements one by right clicking go into express input DAC assistant and then once you insert it, it'll ask you what you want to do. So we're going to acquire a signal. And it's going to be analog. And these DACs always read in voltage. So I'm going to select AI0 only. Now if you wanted to select like AI2 and 1 and 3 at the same time now, you click finish. So over this DAC, you can change the full scale range by doing this configuration here. And what you're going to do is you can change it to plus or minus 20, plus or minus 10, plus or minus 5, plus or minus 4, underscore 1, as you can see here. And you can also save this to an HTML file. I'm going to post the pinouts of the DAC itself, as well as the manual, like I said. So remember, you can only put in those certain in-scaled ranges. And of course, your resolution of your DAC changes based on the scale inputs you do. So say you only have one channel you want. You go ahead and remove that second channel and you hit OK. And then it'll set up your, your uh, computer to run the DAC. And of course, the output is the data, the data port here is the output like before in measurements one. Then you have your rate controls you can insert, your number of samples, and your timeout in seconds. So again, remember that if you're getting an error and you're trying to collect samples longer than 10 seconds, go to the advanced timing and increase it or create a control. Now if you have two channels you want to do, you can add a second voltage channel and specify what channel that is, and then hit OK. And then remember that when you run this system, both channels will come out in that data uh, box. So they'll both come out here. And that is pretty much how you use the DAC with LabVIEW. You're expected to remember how to use LabVIEW from the rest of measurements one, how to use the blocks you need, and you're expected to make your own VIs without, without any guidance. So you can always look back on the measurements one data you have. And uh, that's how you use the 6008 and the 6009 with LabVIEW. Today we're going to be doing a tutorial on how to use the NIUSB 6008 and 6009 DACs in LabVIEW. So you're going to go ahead and connect the USB cable to the DAC and then go ahead and connect it to the computer. And you'll notice that it'll tell you, oh, we've detected the USB. If not, it will uh, install a driver. So then go ahead and open LabVIEW. Now keep in mind that when you're using these DACs, if you have an old VI you made and you're getting an error from the DAC Assistant, it's most likely because you need to delete that DAC Assistant and reinsert it for that specific DAC. So when you use the DAC in LabVIEW, it memorizes which specific DAC you're using on what specific port on the specific computer you're using. So we're going to go ahead and use the control and uh, shortcut to open a new VI, or you can click blank VI. And then you have your front panel and block diagram. I'm going to go ahead and go to the block diagram. Now you're going to use the same DAC assistant block as you did in measurements one by right clicking, go into express, input, DAC assistant. And then once you insert it, it'll ask you what you want to do. So we're going to acquire a signal. And it's going to be analog. And these DACs always read in voltage. So I'm going to select AI0 only. Now if you wanted to select like AI2 and 1 and 3 at the same time you can by selecting control to do ones that aren't together. 
or you can do shift which will include all of them. I'm just going to do AI0 one channel for now and click finish. So over to this DAC you can change the full scale range by doing this configuration here and what you're going to do is you can change it to plus or minus 20, plus or minus 10, plus or minus 5, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 2.5 volts, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 1.25 volts, and plus or minus 1. So you can't use anything other than that. I am going to post the specs or the manual for the 6008 and the 6009 DAC, and it will tell you that when you use a differential configuration, you can have only these ranges. So if you need to have something that's on the order of millivolts, you're going to want to do plus or minus 1. If you're having something like pressure transducers, you're probably going to want to do plus and minus 10 or plus or minus 20. Now, once you have everything set up, you can also change your channels by hitting add channel. And I guess, of course, you're going to add voltage or remove channel or change the channel you're using. And then if you want to use RSC instead of uh, the differential, like I just discussed in how to use the video on how to use the DAX. And then you can also use continuous sampling, one sample, and on demand. So you guys can play with those as you see fit and as you see fit for the labs. So the main part is we're going to be using differential most of the time. And if you're having trouble trying to connect to this DAC, if you go to this top tab here and you see connection diagram, it'll show you how to connect the DAC. So if you're on the analog side, because we're doing analog input, so if you orient the DAC with the USB connector going downwards to the screen, so the analog facing to the right, this will show you how to connect it. Now, if you switch it to RSC and you go back to connection diagram, it'll show you how to connect it that way, where it's ground and then AI0+. Plus. And then if you did differential, like I said before, it's ground it's AI0 plus and AI0 minus and then if you add in another signal say let's add in AI3 and then you go to connection diagrams it'll show you for that signal so you can select the voltage signal by itself not the underscore, z underscore zero it'll show you and then you can also save the underscore one as you can see here and you can also save this to an HTML file I'm going to post the pinouts of the DAC itself as well as the manual, like I said. So remember, you can only put in those certain in scaled ranges, and of course, your resolution of your DAC changes based on the scale inputs you do. So, say you only have one channel you want, you go ahead and remove that second channel and you hit OK. And then it'll set up your, your uh, computer to run the DAC. And of course, the output is the data. The data port here is the output, like before, measurements one. Then you have your rate controls you can insert, your number of samples, and your timeout in seconds. So again, remember that if you're getting an error and you're trying to collect samples longer than 10 seconds, go to the advanced timing and increase it or create a control. Now if you have two channels you want to do, you can add a second voltage channel and specify what channel that is, and then hit OK. And then remember that when you run this system, both channels will come out in that data uh, box. So they'll both come out here. And that is pretty much how you use the DAC with LabVIEW. You're expected to remember how to use LabVIEW from the rest of Measurements 1, how to use the blocks you need, and you're expected to make your own VIs without, without any guidance. So you can always look back on the Measurements 1 data you have. And uh, that's how you use the 6008 and the 6009 with LabVIEW.